Making minigames in Minecraft is one of my favorite things to do. Recently, I decided to test my server mate's ability to aim and perfectly time firing a crossbow at flying armor stands in a game I called Disarmored. So today I want to walk you through my process from conceptualizing a minigame to actually creating it in Minecraft. But before we get into that, I want to quickly thank the sponsor of this video, Core. Core is a brand new online platform that lets anyone not only play PC games, but you can also create your own games for others to play. And the best part is, it's completely free. Core is powered by the Unreal Engine and already has a huge catalog of games from different genres such as shooters, RPGs, Sims, and many, many more. Games are made by the community of fellow gamers just like yourself, so you're going to find some really unique and fun games available to play for free. I've been blown away at how easy Core has made it to design your own game using the Core framework, which makes it super simple to create your own games from scratch using thousands of free, high-quality music, sound, and art assets. And the best part about it, you don't don't even need to know how to code. Just like in Minecraft, you can build up your own environment for other players to explore and even paint your own terrain with their easy to use construction kit. Once your game is ready, just hit the publish button and other players can play it on the core platform for free. New games are being published every day for you to build, battle and explore with friends. So be sure to check them out by clicking the link in the description below. The first thing I like to do when starting construction of a new minigame is to give myself a blank canvas. And in the case of Minecraft, that means creating a new world to work in. If you're using Java, you, there's a redstone preset that you can use that will give you plenty of flat space to work with and you won't have to worry about slime spawning or any of those other nuisances as you're trying to build out your minigame. Some tips that I can give you when using these types of worlds is if you don't need hostile mobs, turn it to peaceful. Also, you can stop the daylight cycle and you can stop weather from happening so you don't have to worry about it turning night or raining on you while you're trying to figure out how to make your game. If you're a Bedrock user, I'm sure there's a way to do it. Maybe Google it. Sorry, I don't have an answer for you. I'm a Java player. So once you're all set with your blank canvas, now is arguably the hardest part of designing a minigame. And that is coming up with a good idea. So the way I came up with this armored was actually a combination of two ideas that I've had in the past. The first one was a game that I created back in Hermitcraft season three called Disrailed. And the idea of that game was to launch minecarts into the air, which you would then shoot out and we could collect that and see if you hit it or not and get points from that. So between that and then also a new feature that's come out since then that allows dispensers to now place armor stands between those two ideas, I came up with this new idea to use armor stands instead of minecarts. And then also the fact that you can place armor on the armor stands was also the other little wrinkle that I wanted to throw into the mix so that we could have a distinction between whether or not you're going to get points from just an armor stand or if it had armor equipped and you get some extra points from that. So once you've got your idea all figured out, the next thing you want to do is to actually write down that idea and any requirements you may have for how that game is going to work. Now with this armor, it looked a little bit like this. So obviously the idea of the game is to shoot armor stands out of the air to score points. Armor stands equipped with armor will be worth more points. Armor stands need to be launched from different directions around the game. Each armor stand launcher needs to fire off randomly, and the game should last about a minute long. At the end of the game, each point scored should result in a token that can then be traded for goodies. That is exactly what I wanted, and just on the surface, it seems like a daunting task to make a game that is going to do all these things. But if we break it down into bite-sized chunks and kind of separate out each thing that we need to do one by one, it's actually not too bad. Okay, let's start off by just figuring out how we're going to launch the armor stand up into the air and then kick it over into the little area that we want to be having the contestant or the player shooting into. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just do a slime block on top of a sticky piston. And then what we need to do is put a dispenser back here. This is going to actually dispense the armor stand onto the slime block and then what we want to do is actually detect that with an observer so if we put an observer right 
here, what we can do is put a string here. And now you can see if we have the armor stand inside, let's put a few of them in here because we're going to be testing this out. And we have a string in front. As the armor stand comes out of this dispenser, we should see that observer light up right there like so. Now we just need to carry that signal down to the actual piston. And we can do that pretty simply by putting a couple of observers to carry that signal kind of down and around. And that will power that block right there. And we can put some redstone right there and that should power that piston no problem as the armor stand comes out let's remove that one and you can see we get a single pulse and what's going to happen is when an armor stand actually comes out of this guy it's going to pulse twice and we've also created a pretty cool clock. Okay, so obviously we don't want our armor stand just bouncing straight up and down. We want to actually kick it over into the spot where they're going to be shooting at. And we can do that by detecting it coming straight up from this guy with another piece of string observer and some redstone dust. And this should now kick it out. So if we press this button, you'll see it go up and then get kicked over. That is exactly what we want. So this is kind of the basis of how our armor stands will get sent into the shooting gallery. Now, one of the things we wanted to do was give the player an opportunity to score more points if they hit armor stands with armor. And we want to make that random as well. So to do that, it's pretty easy. We just add another dispenser on top of the one that's spitting out the armor stands. And on this one, out of the nine spots, we only fill two of them with some armor. And that means there's basically a two out of nine chance that it's going to get equipped with armor. And of course, first try, we get an equipped piece of armor uh, and obviously we would want to make sure that that armor gets replenished as well and we can do that by setting up a hopper chain that's constantly feeding it but there you go that one comes out no armor but you do see we are getting a block spit out and we have to find a way to kind of grab that block and put it back in the system so that this doesn't just constantly run out of items so now we just solved that problem by giving it a hopper to catch the blocks because basically all the armor is going to get put onto the armor stand. Anything that's not armor will get shot past it and we can grab it with the hopper, bring it back up and put it right back in here. So if it's a block of iron, we can kind of keep this thing fully stocked. So let's see if we can see that in action if we don't get an armor stand. All right, that should have had a block come through and it should have been collected into there, put into this dropper and the one that was already in there should have fired across and it is being held in this one now. So we see there is two of these stacks that are missing a block and if we press it again we should see it get auto replenished and there we go again two of these stacks are missing a block and so it is just kind of cycling itself keeping it full so that we always have seven of the spots in this dispenser filled up with something other than armor so we need to figure out how to make sure we keep everything stocked as far as keeping these two chest plates in here even when one spit out and also making sure that there's always enough armor stand now, on the Hermitcraft server, when I built the game, what else I did was collect all the items at the end of the game and send them all back to each individual station here. And you can see I've got some chests here that kind of represent that collection point. And all we do is we feed it in through a hopper here. So we have a bunch of extra chest plates in this case. And then we also have these armor stands, which are actually being fed into a dropper below this guy that is shooting up into it. So as this gets activated, you can see this currently has a uh, completely filled with armor stands. Stands. You should see one shot out and we also lost a chest plate on that as well But you can see it's right back to being completely stocked and this one should have pulled in a brand new chest plate from here There we go. And in that way it keeps stocked now Of course if a player was to hit it with an arrow It would break down go around the system and work its way back into this chest via item sorters and things like that Ice ways and things that I put in place so that this thing could be completely maintenance free And that was one of my requirements as well. I didn't want to have to come in here and constantly check chests and make sure that armor stands were ready to go. So the next piece of the puzzle here is we need our armor stand launchers to fire off randomly. And we can do that pretty simply by using this whole dropper hopper combination with a comparator coming off. You see, as we signal to this dropper, it's going to select one of these four items randomly. And if it selects the stone sword here because it's not stackable, it's going to give a little bit longer of a signal to this redstone line, which is just enough to make it to that repeater. If one of these blocks make its way, into the hopper the signal is going to die right about here and it won't set that off so we should see if we start clicking this button a one in four chance and we got lucky on the first try click it again no good click it again no good you can see got lucky on that one and we actually got some armor as well so we got doubly lucky on that one so now the randomization part is taken care of and basically all we need to do is figure out how to 
trigger this line right here on a clock for about a minute long because we did say uh, also that we wanted our game to last about a minute long. All right, so this is how I did the timer for the game to kind of give it that one minute gameplay style. And we've got ourselves, basically it's a pulse extender here, but we can control how long this thing runs by how many blocks are in here. And this is roughly a minute, just over a minute that it's gonna run. And this is equivalent to pressing the button to start the game. So as you can see, once we press that button, it's going to deactivate this torch and that allows this repeater clock to start happening. And this clock is just sending that signal to that dropper that every once in a while, that iron sword will pop out of. And when it does, you can see that's when the armor stands get spit out. And yeah, I can kind of watch it go around here. You can see it every once in a while. You're obviously gonna see that sword disappear and there we go. So this is what's just doing that kind of loop of a signal during the entire game. And then the randomization of that dropper decides when we're gonna actually get a stand fired. Now this signal, I basically just carry across to each one of these stations. So it was a matter of duplicating these stations over and over again. I have five total stations, one on each side and three in the back on the final version of the game. So now we get to a bit of a tricky part. We need to know whether or not the player actually hit the armor stand when they shoot their crossbow and when they miss it. So I set this up. Basically, we've got a water basin, which we can make wider depending on how we position all of our armor stand launchers. And we need to basically detect a broken down armor stand versus a regular one. So you can see a regular one, if they miss, it's just gonna go off the edge and fall and it's still in armor stand form. However, if they shoot it, it's going to turn into an item and a flow across. And now we can actually pick it up with hopper minecarts. And this one gets sent here. So this is how I'm able to separate the difference between whether or not they were successful in their shot or whether or not they straight up missed. And of course, if the armor stand was wearing a gold chest plate, that as well would drop as an item and end up in the same area as the armor stands. Now the problem is, what do we do with the armor stands that don't get hit? Because they're gonna just fall down and be in that form there. We need to actually break them down so that we can put them back into the system and that way it can replenish itself. So how are we gonna do that? Well, my initial thought was cactuses, right? Cactuses pretty much break everything. Well, to my surprise, Cactuses don't actually break down armor stands. Yeah, they really don't care about it. So the idea I came up with was just to shoot them with an arrow automatically. So as these get fired off, a signal will come down into this dispenser and it's gonna shoot an arrow out and actually break it down. And then we just lay some hoppers down to collect that and we can send it on its way back into the chest here so that these get replenished automatically. And now the final piece of the puzzle. How do we make sure we give the player extra points if they hit an armor stand with an actual piece of armor on it? So to do that, we simply just take the comparator output that's coming through the line that these are traveling through. And if it reaches this guy, we're gonna go ahead and lock this side and make this piston go up with observers. And it's gonna actually fire out a couple extra of the tokens here. So see that in action you'll see the armor stand comes across that one should get locked right there there we go and you get three tokens that come out of course we're just using iron nuggets to demonstrate and also of course you're going to be also hitting the armor stand as well so you get that extra point from that which we should see come through that right there if i actually had a block where it was supposed to go let's see that again a little derp there we should see it come out that side only there we go because the signal did not reach this side and it went through here so that is how we set it up so they get the right amount of points or the right amount of tokens out of here every time they hit the armor stand with armor they get the extra bit because of this little observer clock that happens for a little bit and then if they only get the armor stand they just get a single one shot out of here and these of course go up into the chest which they collect at the end of the game and that is basically it once we piece all these things together create a few extra stations add some other bits and bobs like note blocks and lights indicator lights to make the game a little bit easier then we have it we have a fully functioning mini game in Minecraft. In this case, it's called Disarmored, but you guys can take this idea and apply it to any mini game ideas you have. Just remember, break it down into small pieces. Come up with your design, come up with your requirements, start to list out the things it needs to do one by one, and then figure it out.
right? Even if you don't know how to do all this redstone, there's lots of YouTube tutorials out there that will teach you how to do certain things. Like we knew we needed to press a button and have a signal last for 60 seconds. Pulse extender right here. That's definitely gonna be on YouTube somewhere. I can't even remember who made this. I think it was code crafted about a decade ago. And obviously we have the clocks going on here. There's a lot of different style clocks you can use. Just search YouTube, Minecraft tutorial for redstone clock. You should be able to find this kind of stuff and piece it all together in a creative world. And once you have it, then kind of put it together in a nice package, right? Like I would start with this in creative world and end up with a nice, more compact version of this whole thing, which you saw on the Hermitcraft server. So hopefully that helps guys. And hopefully you enjoyed this mini game design. I've never done anything like this. So let me know in the comments below what you thought. If you enjoyed me kind of walking through the process, giving you a sneak peek behind the curtains of how this all came together. And of course, don't forget to check out the sponsor of this video core. Again, link in the description. If you guys want to design your own games, even outside of Minecraft, core is an incredible platform to check out to do that. Use that creativity of yours and go off and design something cool. And that's gonna do it for me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do that before you go. And with that said, I'll see you again next time. Have a good one, everyone.